time out, there was action aplenty in the opening round at Mount Panorama. As the dust settled, it was Matt Simmons who took out top honours. But all that is now history as Speedweek's E-Series moves on to Japan and the Suzuka circuit for round two. It's game on. It's fast, it's the future, and it's fiercely taken the world by storm. Esports has borne exceptional talent and shaped the finesse of many a successful driver. And now we're bringing you along for the ride. Welcome to round two of Speed Week's E-Series, where the best GT sport racers in Australia come together alongside our nation's finest professional drivers. In a test of skill and speed, they battle it out competing behind the wheel of our racing sims to find our first ever E-Series champion. Last round saw some incredible racing with Matt Simmons currently in the lead and Josh Muggleton hot on his heels. At the end of round one, we have our professional drivers leading the competition on 154 points, followed by our gamers on 114 points. They are led by Simon Feigl. Things are sure to heat up this round, which sees drivers tackle Suzuka Circuit Japan. Who will be leading at the end of round two? Only time will tell. Buckle up, it's almost race time. I'm Jake Blackall, 22, avid sim racer, being picked up by Ash Sutton to compete in British Sim Racing Touring Cars Championship and compete in numerous European leagues. I'm driving in the BMW M6 GT3. I'm Keishi Yuko, I'm 31, I'm a 2016 GT Academy International finalist. In 2017, I raced in the Nissan Micro Cup in Canada and I'll be racing in the Nissan GTR GT3. I'm Joel Dimack, I'm 28 from Brisbane, Queensland. I'm a professional drifter and a sim racer. Today I'll be driving the Audi R8 GT3. I'm Simon Feigl, I'm 33 years old from Melbourne, the highest placed Australian within the Blanc Pain GT Championship in iRacing, and today I'll be driving the McLaren GT3. I'm Josh Muggleton, 31 from Sydney, I'm gamer turned real life racer through GT Academy, and for this competition I'm racing the Mercedes AMG GT. I'm Matt Simmons, 29 from Melbourne, Australia, the winner of the Nissan PlayStation GT Academy Championship, now a professional driver, and now driving the Jaguar F-Type GT3. I'm John Collins, 26 from Sydney, 2015 Australian Formula 3 champion. I'm a pro driver, driving the Honda NSX GT3. I'm Luke King, 28 years old from the central coast of New South Wales. Pro driver, currently racing in the 2018 Toyota 6 Racing Series. Today, I'm racing the Ferrari 458 Italia GT3, and I'm here to beat up some gamers. What company we are in. Some awesome drivers and equally impressive races. Well, without further ado, it's now time to head into our first qualifying session of round two. Thank you, Tess. From Mount Panorama, we move to Suzuka in Japan. Just about the same distance, but certainly the big speeds will be there again. Matt Simmons is the first car out in qualifying. Justin Ruggi is alongside me, and this guy went back to back at Mount Panorama in the first rounds. At a two minutes point four two was the time they were chasing. That was a great lap by Matty. We'll see what uh, what's to come from other drivers. So Feigl goes across. Well, not too much difference between the times there. Two minutes point five four for Feigl, but here comes Josh Muggleton. Already you can see that time is quicker as he comes along and is just going to pip and grab the number one position by two hundredths of a second. Easily our closest qualifying session so far. Matt Simmons will start from second. Feigl and Blackhall on the second row. Back to Luke King. Ayukai's alongside him. Back to Dimac and John Collins in the Honda starting on the fourth row. Great lap for Muggleton. Well done, Josh Muggleton. That was a great lap. So, as we saw... At Bathurst, except it's a roll reversal with Muggleton starting from pole position in the Mercedes. The drivers get ready, the tension starts to rise, and we get set for race number one around this blistering 5.81 kilometre circuit, just over 3.6 miles at the Suzuka International Circuit, where you need to be patient, you need to look after tyres, but also keep the speeds up. Definitely, and you can see Matt Simmons and Josh Muggleton looking at each other's screens. They're sitting side by side, so... Bit of game face going on there. So the race starts and already Muggleton gets a bit of a margin heading down the long straight. You carry a lot of speed down here into turn number one where the track drops away. It can easily unload you when it starts turning right down there at turn two. It'll be interesting to see if Muggleton can, can uh, stretch his legs and uh, build a gap on cold tyres. Here's Blackhall, the BMW M6 we ride on board as he just touches that real 
tough Vallelunga curve on the left-hand side. This is the complex of turns I was talking about. Right and left, you've got to be patient at the same time, keeping the momentum up. Not really much of a, a chance to pass in this area, though. No, this is all about sitting there and trying to maximise the entry and exit. You really want to be as close as possible to try and maximise the, the straight line speed later on in this track. So this is what we were looking forward to. Matt Simmons now doing the chasing on Muggleton across the curve. They're both taking advantage of that inside line down into turn number nine and under the bridge. This on board with the Nissan GTR. And underneath the big crossover point, iconic at the Suzuka circuit. Listen to that sound on that GTR. I just love it. This is the perfect track for the GTR too in homeland, isn't it? Then it's the hairpin right on the back of the Ferrari. So they sweep around the slowest point of the track. That's Luke King ahead. We know Luke from his Toyota 86 exploits in Australia. Yeah, Luke King's a very professional racer. He's doing really well in the Toyota 86 series. But don't we like that? We've got professional gamers and professional drivers in this series. That's what I love about this E-series. I want to be part of it. I want to get him bored. So. <laughs> Here's your leader, Muggleton. Heading up the top of the track now. Matt Simmons doing the chasing. You go back to Feigl in third. On top now of the big jag. Back-to-back -back race wins at Bathurst in the first round of the E-Series. Really fast corner, this one. And in the hard break, we've seen some amazing racing over the years at this corner. Now, that corner was very important. Hopefully, he got a bit of a margin on him to try and catch him. But uh, Tom will tell if he's got the speed over Muggleton. What we're seeing now is the first three. At the last round of Bathurst, it was the front two guys that disappeared. Feigl is staying with the cars ahead. The McLaren 650S heading down to turn number one. Let's learn a bit more about Simon Feigl right now. The 33-year-old from Melbourne runs his own esports team, though. Yeah, interesting. I mean, uh, obviously his credentials from his resume um, shows a lot of uh, simulator racing, and um, you can tell by his speed on the sim. International finalist of the GT Academy back in 2015, which was won by Matt Simmons. Back on board now with Feigl through the right-hander here. At turn, this is the S-curves, and sweeping around through turn seven. Across the top there, the car can really understeer to the outside. There's a nice big heavy gravel trap on the other side. As your leader, Muggleton, brings us down is the Degna curve, turn number eight, and into nine. He looks comfortable out in front here. You can see the attitude of that Mercedes-Benz compared to the Jaguar. It seems to be more planted where the Jaguar's got a lot more movement. So whether that's hampering uh, Simmons or not, I'm not sure yet, but um, definitely Muggleton's getting away a little bit. I think the McLaren looks more stable in the cars ahead. It just doesn't have the straight line speed from our observations here at the moment. Yeah, and again, it's, it's all about, you know, getting the braking markers right and getting on the throttle as early as possible. Maybe uh, he hasn't mastered that yet, but he seems to be catching Simmons. So heading down into the left-hander once again. We stay on board with Feigl. That's Simmons ahead, just understeering a bit to the outside. will wash off a bit of speed here, and that can hurt you climbing the hill. Yeah, you can see that. And, if, and again, for Feigl, it's all about capitalising on that understeer. And you can see the draft now. He's starting to catch you. Be pretty gutsy to make the move here. He'll get right onto the back of the Jag and has to lift off the throttle to stop the aero wash from really affecting the turning speed. I'd make a move here if you can. No, he stayed behind him. A whole head of steam, didn't he? Through the right and left, the chicane brings you back onto the main straight. So just like that, the final lap starts here. And Muggleton, that's the biggest margin of the race so far as he starts this, the final lap. It's amazing seeing it from this perspective. I mean, in car, it's a lot harder than from me calling this race it uh, makes it look, look a lot easier than what it is you want to get back in behind the wheel don't you <laughs> i'm very edgy man. that makes two of us through the right hander back on board our third place man no feigl the mclaren 650s chasing the jaguar but it's the mercedes out in front and i don't want to put the commentator's curse on looks comfortable we're just over half a lap remaining here at suzuka yeah from the outset josh looked very focused and um yeah, again, it was up to, to Simmons to sort of capitalise early, but it uh, looks like Josh is just running away with it. Down towards the deck, the curve we go again, turn number eight. It's an 18-turn course here at Suzuka, known a lot for its testing in the Honda days back in the, the mid to late 80, 80s and early 90s. We've seen some great racing, but Matt Simmons, I think he's been shown up in this one, and this is good for the series. This is excellent for the series, and again, to see two guys go head-to-head, I mean, not only just them two, but other guys too in the category as well. So, you know, interesting things to come ahead. We saw Black Hole back in fourth position ahead of Luke King. Ayukai still runs in sixth. Then Dimak and John Collins through the back of the field. And he'd like to be aboard that Honda NSX 
running back in eighth position as down towards turn 13 the spoon curve of this Suzuka International Circuit and then the big climb really from this point once he gets through at turn 15 I'm pretty sure Muggleton will be safe from that point now, unless he makes a big mistake at the end of this lap uh, you know like, a, like you said you want to put the commentators curse on you I've been good at that over the years through the left-hander, huge speed through here. Just glancing the curb, runs right out to the edge. And now the last of the hard breaks into the right-hander. A great time in qualifying. Saw our second different pole position award winner of the season. And Josh Muggleton from the front row, from the top position, will take race number one here at Suzuka and maximum points for the Mercedes ahead of Simmons and Feigl. And didn't they leave Jake Blackhall? He ran a lonely race back there in fourth. Yeah, unfortunately he did, and uh, the top three, I mean, great, great driving by all three of them, and uh, just shows the competitiveness of this series. A fairly clean affair right through the field, but Muggleton one second clear of Matt Simmons, a further second back to Feigl. Black Hole in fourth position ahead of Luke King. A UK in the GTR was in sixth position ahead of Dimac, and John Collins completes your top eight, but some 28 seconds behind our race winner, Josh Muggleton. I'm Josh Muggleton, 31 from Sydney. Some of my achievements start in gaming. I um, won a couple of online championships and then in 2014 I entered GT Academy. I was lucky enough to come second in the world there and just missed out on a, a million dollar contract with Nissan. But um, came back to Australia and started my real life racing career and since coming back to Australia some of my achievements I've won multiple production car races and round wins. I've set a new European class record at uh, World Time Attack Challenge. Some of my goals for the future are probably just continue building my career and, and moving up towards different categories. Um, I'd like to end up in Carrera Cup or something like that in Australia. I'm really honoured to be here and, and be invited to compete as a, as a pro driver. Some of the differences between the sim driving and real life driving, you don't get that feeling in the butt. <laughs> That's how you drive a real car, you, you get to know what it's doing um, beneath the seat, um, so you obviously don't get that. But a lot of the basic principles transfer across. Some of the things from real driving coming back to sim, you have to unlearn. But you can take more risks in the sim just because there's no reset button um, in real life. So there's always that fear factor which is sort of underlying. But um, yeah, there's, there's lots more risk in taking the game and try different things and not have to pay the damage bill at the end of it. I'm not sure who I'm going to be watching yet, but some of those gamers, they're, they're very accomplished. So I'm going to be looking at everybody. I'm Joel Dimack, I'm 28 from Brisbane, Queensland. So my gaming experience probably started uh, around back in 2015-16 when I tried out for GT Academy the first year. Uh, I didn't get through too far that time, but it definitely lit a fire in me that I wanted to get better at the game. You know, I worked on my gaming, I worked on uh, physical fitness and all the different aspects that we had to, you know, obviously be judged on to, to get to the finals. So being a GT Academy finalist was, was great. It was uh, really great to be a part of, you know, just brands like PlayStation and Nissan and, and just put together such a professional event. So great atmosphere, really challenging activities that we had. You know, we had a physical aspect, we had media, you know, talking in front of a camera and things like this. And then there was a, a, a driving aspect as well. So we got on the stunt track and, you know, did a Gymkhana layout. And so it was good to, to tick every box to accumulate the points to actually, you know, get to the point where they pick who they're, who they're going to take over to Silverstone. So. so I've been competing and drifting, probably coming up on 10 years now. I'm so passionate about drifting. I love the sport. I want to see it grow into what it can be, which is you know, known for being a professional motorsport. It's something that looks out of control, but it's about being having total control of the vehicle, and that's the part that I love about it too. It's, a, it's such an individual expression. It's more artistic. It's, it's individual, you know, and it's, there's also a battle element, so there's a one-on-one. -on -one. I really like that as well. It's like a dogfight. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, honestly. Like, it's so great to, to be amongst the, the talent like, you know, Matt Simmons and Josh Muggleton. Those guys are just so quick, especially on the game. They're obviously so talented in real life as well. It's a pleasure to be involved with something like this. I'm just doing my best to keep up, honestly, but I'm having a blast here. It's really fun. So. Let's take a look at the points now. It's eight between Simmons and Muggleton after that race win to Muggleton in race number one. Feigl is back in third. Ayukai in fourth position back to Blackhall. King, Collins and Dimmock in eighth position. Time to go into qualifying session number two here to set the grid for race number two of the Suzuka International Circuit. And up first once again is Matt Simmons aboard the Jaguar. We saw that two minutes point four 
lap from Josh Muggleton earlier today. What's the time going to stop? Two minutes point one five. The times they are a tumbling. Look how much curb they're using on that last turn. Uh, pretty cool. Here's Muggleton. The big sound of the big Mercedes Benz out of the final turn. Remember, he was fast earlier today. Not this time though. Two minutes point two seven. And Jake Blackhole is the final car in this session. And Black Hole above the BMW, 201.1. Not a bad time. Puts himself in third behind Simmons. Another pole position ahead of Muggleton. Feigl will start from fourth position alongside King. Ayukai, Collins and Dimak starting back in seventh and eighth position. Ayukai in that big Nissan GTR. Watch for him during this race. We get set for race number two. So Simmons goes back to pole. Yeah, it's uh, interesting to see the Jaguar got the, uh, got the first position that time round. See what Muggleton's got for Simmons. Drivers all getting set for this second race. And when you've done it professionally, you still are doing it professionally right now. It's not just about being physically fit. This is more about being mentally fit for this stuff, isn't it? Yeah, for me on the simulator, I feel more pressure than real racing. So, uh, yeah, I don't know why. It's uh, you've definitely got to be on it and got to be committed. And uh, we'll see how this race pans out. And that's why Matt Simmons was a winner in 2015. which got him a ride in the Blanc Pan series in 2016. And we'll start from pole position for the final race as we go green here at Suzuka. Three laps around this 5.8 kilometer circuit. And this time, Josh Muggleton has all the work to do. Surprised that Josh wasn't closer on that uh, start then. Well, he's Luke King. That was a bit uh, uh, protective of the racing line, wasn't it, from the McLaren on the first lap into turn number one? Look at the attitude of that McLaren too on cold tires. It just looks stable. Much like the Ferrari that you're watching right now, this is Luke King looking for a good result aboard that Ferrari 458 here today. You can see he's definitely trying to catch and latch onto that McLaren. Early stages across the top, back on board with Muggles, and we caught him at a really weird time. That car was squirming its way around the backside of the circuit through turn seven, down to the Degna curve, and this is where he made up a lot of ground. Yeah, I'll be just trying to not do too many silly moves. I'd be there trying to be as smooth as possible. You want to be on that, uh, on the back of him on that run down the back straight. Right on that white line, right on the edge, slowest point. Oh. Gives him a shove. Gives him a shove down at turn 11 at the hairpin. Oh, there's some temperature out there now. He definitely wants to get close to him. That's as close as it gets. That would have got the blood temperature up aboard that Jaguar. And again, sometimes it's, it's um, not hard to misjudge breaking points and... Uh, Unfortunately, he just missed the braking marker just a, a little bit too much then. A lot more feeling in this second race than what we saw in race number one. So you get that feeling the Mercedes is a much stronger car around this Suzuka circuit, maybe. It definitely looks planted, and I know Josh very well. Probably be thinking about points and wanting to get past Simmons to, to capitalise on the points in this series. He's in the slipstream, won't be able to do it down here. Turn number 15, and on the run down to the chicane, Simmons protects the line and it'll make him go the long way. Won't do it this lap around, but we have got a race in our hands here as lap number one is complete at Suzuka. It'd be interesting to see the exit that Josh gets here, because I noticed uh, before the traction control light was staying on on the uh, vehicle's car quite a bit. Let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that, though, because you've raced. I've played on here. It's as good as it gets for me. How realistic is this? It's extremely realistic. And again, you know, with that traction control, um, you know, if you can't straight line the corner, the traction control stays on and it hampers the exit. And again, you can see that the BMW, how much he's lost on the exit just then. So it's very important. Oh, it's not staying patient, is it? Try the outside. If it happens, it'll be cool. But he's in a box seat to go down the inside here. The McLaren side by side with the BMW. Again, this would be frustrating for them too because these. Uh oh, are... Muggleton off the circuit and gone in a big way. I cannot believe that. And that has dropped him at least a position or two. A mistake from Muggleton at the top there, sweeping their way through turn seven. And he's now in sixth position. A total game changer in the series. I'm just thinking whether or not he got aero pushed then because he was relatively close. So it just goes to show how realistic this game is. Feigl almost snapped it sideways, got on the gas a little bit too early at the exit at the hairpin at turn number 11. It has plenty more power than the BMW ahead. 
And again, it's one thing to sit there and it's another thing to pass. So you just got to be, use strategy, you got to be smart about how you place the car and get on the throttle as early as possible. Just like in real life. Exactly like real life. <laughs> Out of the bottom of the circuit we go, out of the spoon curve, turn 14, and now the long run up at 200 R straight. Past the old pit straight on the right hand side. Big speeds building. And in this fast sweeping left hander, pulls out for the moves. Feigl, this will be brave. They'll go side by side and Sykes the BMW out. That was a really good move there. Scary move too. If yeah. you think about how much speed is there, luckily these days there's a lot of Asphalt or Benjamin runoff area on the outside as here is Muggleton coming back through the field after having that spin on this lap. So he's clawing back some positions. He's up into fifth now. This has really hurt Muggleton. I mean, three laps, not a lot of laps to get, uh, you know, to, to be in the right position. And unfortunately, it's hurt him and uh, back in fifth place now. So Jaguar leads McLaren on the final lap. You're watching Muggleton back in fifth position with all the work to do. But like you pointed out, with only a whisker under 5Ks, not much of a chance now to really claw back maybe another position. Luke King is still ahead. But like you said, catching's one thing, passing, a completely different story. Especially at Suzuka, it's such a technical track. There's a lot of turns, um, a lot of flowing corners as well. Um, and again, Josh is right up there as close as possible. And it looks like you got uh, the front end uh, washout. So. An iconic Ferris wheel in the background of this Suzuka circuit. Now we watch the battle really intensifying for second and third position between Feigl and Blackhall on the final lap. Forget about Matt Simmons, he is out of here. Yeah, if I was Blackhall now, I'd be trying to get as close as possible, trying to get a good run out of here without spending too much time in the traction control. Looks like he might have got an OK run. He might be close enough by the back straight. Cautious approach, wasn't it, on the exit of the hairpin. He's dropped a few yards back behind the McLaren so this will be the argument over the final two podium positions meantime here's Muggleton on the back of Luke King aboard the Ferrari looks like that uh, Muggleton might be able to get a get a good run he's very close <laughs> close but will he stay in the slipstream he's got a good drive out of this turn out of 14 gets into the slipstream reeling him in here as he pulled out a bit too early, one would suggest yes. Sweeping through the left-hander for the final time. He's got one last chance here, really, to make it happen. Dive down the inside, but the Ferraris will wake up to it. And that position should stay the same. But Matt Simmons, it's another race win. Victory number three in the Speed Week E-Series for 2018. Second and third. It's a drag race on here. The Ferrari shutting the door on the Mercedes. Wow. Well what a done, finish. Matt Simmons. Well done. And a big margin. Four seconds back to Feigl. Black Hole in third ahead of King. Muggleton. A Yukai back in sixth ahead of Dimac. And John Collins completing your top eight. Matt Simmons, a class act. But that battle for second and third, awesome. Well, we're going to speak to our winner, Matt, shortly. But Jake Blackhall, impressive performance coming in third position. Nice work. Good race. Yeah, thank you. It was a um, great battle with Simon Feigl. It was um, on for young and old, too, too wide for most of the track. But uh, we kept it clean, kept it together, and it let him go at the end. But uh, still happy with the third place. It was pretty intense. What was going through your mind? Uh, a lot of nerves, actually. It, it's very intense when you're running side by side like that, especially around uh, like 130R when we'll side by side run it off the track but uh, it, it's difficult but you've got to keep your composure keep it clean and have a good race well you really are you're bringing some fast laps all the best for the rest of the competition thank you standout performer in that race no question about it but matt simmons will lead this series by 24 points back to josh muggleton now simon feigl in third ahead of jake blackhall who we just heard from in fourth position casey yukai luke king then collins and dimmer completing the eight drivers here in this speed week e-series well, after a stellar performance, it is with great pleasure I award our round two trophy to winner, Matt Simmons. <laughs> what an effort, what a performance, Matt. That was one intense race. Yeah, that was insane. My father's most intense race of the series. Uh, Josh was all over me for the first, first lap and a half, basically, having to put some defensive moves on. But um, unfortunately, he... Uh, Got a bit of gravel and it went wide, so that relieved a bit of pressure and I was stoked to get the win in the end. You've now extended your lead to 24 points. Can we expect great things from you next week at Monza? Well, hopefully. Um, you know, it's nice to have a bit of a buffer going into the next round, so we'll just try and hopefully maintain that and see how, how long I can keep the lead for. But, you know, these guys are, are red hot and we'll see how we can uh, 
have some more great races going forward. All the best for round three. Thank you. Well done to Matt Simmons and the pro drivers getting the nod here. 303 points in the margin left-hand side will be the big talking point that we head to round three and four very, very soon. Bit of work to do for Luke King down there in third and John Collins looking for a big comeback in round number three. With two rounds to go, next week's race at Monza is going to count as we get closer to determining who will be the first victor of Speed Week's inaugural E-Series. See you next round. Coming up after the break, we continue our retro rewind with all the tyre frying sideways action from round three of the 2014 Formula Drift Asia from Sydney Motorsport Park.